Welcome to this IG investment video and today we're putting the spotlight on consumer discretionary, a tough sector to navigate during tough economic times but the head of investment strategy at Librem thinks there are still opportunities to be had. Here to dissect the sector with us is Joachim Clement. Joachim, thank you so much for joining us. Consumers being battered on all sides, inflation in some places like the US seem like they're cooling but still sticky, still hot. You know, we've got central banks still mm. poised as well. Why are you looking at the discretionary space? You're absolutely right. Everybody knows that consumer stocks have been horrible last year with the cost of living crisis all over Europe and in the UK and in the US. So why would you invest in it now? Well, number one reason, as you already mentioned, inflation is starting to come down. And we expect inflation to come down throughout 2023, both in Europe and in the US. And that means that consumers and households have a little bit more discretionary income, a little bit more money to spend. And with every little bit more money that they they have to spend, they can afford small luxuries, whether it's a piece of chocolate, whether it's a new dress or a new pair of trousers, doesn't matter. But all of that should be good for the consumer discretionary sector. Now, it's a really wide sector, Joachim. So which parts should investors, traders be looking at? I mean, we're looking at, we've got the personal household, we've got construction, we've got, you know, general retailers. Which parts hold the best opportunities? Mm. So here in Europe, we like the personal goods and uh, uh, services uh, sector um, in the stock 600. Uh, in terms of names, in particular companies, the classic big retailers like Inditex and H&M, but also as I said, small luxuries like chocolate uh, linked in Sprüngli, Swiss chocolate. And since I've been living in Switzerland for 21 years, I do love Swiss chocolate. Um, but there are, if you want to go less broadly diversified and you want to go a bit more specific themes, there is one subsector in particular that is very, very interesting, and that is UK home builders. Uh, the reason being that in the UK we've seen a much more aggressive increase in mortgage rates and as a result home builders have dropped 60 to 80 percent last year. Now mortgage rates have started to come down, inflation has started to come down and that means that home builders will get more demand. And you can already see that the market is starting to recover when it comes to UK home builders and household goods. Now, those are sectors that are going to potentially do well. Which areas not so much? So normally we would say, because we are expecting a recession in the US and across Europe this year, we would stay defensive. So the classic pharmaceutical, food, beverages, tobacco, uh, and the ones that, the sectors that should do really poorly in our view are particular commodity uh, related sectors, whether it's energy uh, or miners. Uh, also, we're not too keen on the financials and in the banks in particular. Now, if you are a trader, an investor listening to this, and indeed you want exposure, but you want to also hedge your bets in case things suddenly change, how would you play this? Well, on the one hand, I think on the long side, I would go for the consumer discretionary sector or home builders if I want to be more specific in the UK. And uh, in case of a hedge, or if you want to have a hedge, uh, go simply for the defensive. So food, beverages and tobacco looks very attractive from a valuation perspective, but will hold up much better in case the recession gets worse than we expected, or in case we get another bout of inflation, which we don't expect at the moment, but we can't exclude. What are the risk factors? Are there um, the Ukraine war pro prolonged uh, perhaps? What are the other black swans for this sector? Uh, for the sector itself, the, the Ukraine war doesn't play such an important role. As long as we don't escalate dramatically into kind of atomic war, nuclear war territory, in which case I am not concerned about my portfolio anymore, but have other problems. Um, <laughs> uh, I think the, the, the biggest risk factor is the uncertainty around China. At the moment, the Chinese reopening is lifting the sector, is giving it tailwinds. But if China, for one, one reason or another, doesn't fulfill the hopes of opening the economy, growing more and consuming more, uh, that could be a potential problem for the uh, consumer discretionary sector in 2023. Right, and Joachim, with every trade, we know that timing, timing, timing is key. What's your timeline on this sector and its call? 
At the moment, it's already uh, getting some tailwinds. It's already recovering from the lows. We think that is not the, the full rally that we will see for the rest of this year. Uh, in fact, what we could see is a little bit of a uh, spot of weakness as uh, the Fed, the Bank of England and the ECB continue to hike interest rates, which will be uh, detrimental to consumer goods. But we expect them to stop hiking in spring. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that from spring onwards, I think we should have a green light. Right, so much to discuss, a little time. The top line from Librams Clement, uh, just to condense that for you, if you want to bet on this sector, perhaps look at chocolates and UK house builders. For those of you trading gold, have a look on our platform to see why gold's just entered a bull market. Until then, I'm Angeline Ong, and this is IGTV.